Let's explore the landscape of mining products and their market dynamics. Mined ore products can be divided into two broad categories, metals and minerals. Metals are a precisely defined group of elements, such as iron and copper, that have a specific set of characteristics, like electrical conductivity. How well do you remember your periodic table? Metals are the group on the center left. Minerals are the other naturally occurring elements in compounds, like coal, which is made of carbon. Carbon falls way over on the right. Metals are the larger category by value, comprising roughly 60% of mining market revenues. As a result, most of the world's largest mining companies, like Glencore, Rio Tinto, and BHP, focus largely on metals, deriving 70% or more of their revenue from this segment. Metals can be further classified into four main segments. The first is iron ore, the largest segment. Iron ore accounts for 75% of global metal production by weight, though only 40% by dollar value. It's heavy, but it's not the highest value metal. Nearly all heavy industries contribute to the demand for iron ore and its derivatives like steel and cast iron. And as a result, demand for iron ore over time tracks closely with economic development, say new infrastructure and housing builds. Historically, iron ore has been the bread and butter of the mining industry, and you may continue to hear a more legacy segmentation, ferrous, containing iron, versus non-ferrous, others. The second group are the so-called base metals. These are non-ferrous metals that are often used in heavy industries at high volumes. Aluminum is the largest segment. It is lightweight metal and resists corrosion and is therefore demanded for a variety of end uses, from household food packaging to automotive and aircraft components. Raw aluminum ore, which is called bauxite, is the second most mined ore after iron ore. Copper, which is widely used for conducting electricity, is also a base metal. The demand for copper wiring has exploded in recent years and is expected to continue to grow as more industries, including automotive, electrify. Some forecasts predict that copper demand will outpace supply in the next few decades, posing a major supply chain risk across industries. The next group is a relatively new segment, defined by their end use case, batteries. The so-called battery metals include lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Demand for these metals, like copper, is sometimes forecasted to outpace supply in the coming years. Lastly are the precious metals, like gold and silver, which are defined by being intrinsically high value. These are used in jewelry, coins, and bullion, a term for bulk metal objects like gold or silver bars. Let's turn to minerals. There are two subcategories, mineral fuels and industrial minerals. Among mineral fuels, coal is by far the most significant. Coal accounts for 80% of mineral market revenue. Technically speaking, oil and gas can be considered mineral fuels, but these are not commonly categorized as part of the mining industry. Long-term demand for coal is expected to decline with global decarbonization initiatives. Consequently, mining companies have begun divesting significant pieces of their coal assets. Industrial minerals are a broad group and include inputs for fertilizers, construction materials, ceramics, and glass. Common industrial minerals include potash, a potassium source for fertilizers, calcium carbonate, an input to paper production, soda ash for glassmaking, and perhaps surprisingly, diamonds. You might think of diamonds as a precious jewelry product, but in fact, 70% of mined diamonds by weight are used in industrial applications, such as drill bits, because of their exceptional hardness. Let's talk about market dynamics, namely pricing. Metals and minerals are priced very differently. Metals are commodity priced. The price is determined by exchanges or benchmarks from reference agencies. Put another way, mining companies are price takers. This is a cost-focused business accordingly. Minerals, however, are typically not exchange-listed or priced as commodities, which means there are opportunities to influence pricing. This also means there is more potential for profit and value capture in the mineral market. And these pricing differences have a big impact on the business model of mine companies in other ways. Since metal miners are price takers, they tend to focus on lowering costs and supply reliability. This leads them to a mine-to-market or supply-driven orientation. Metal miners will commonly focus on scale and efficiency within their existing mined ore portfolio. This, in turn, leads to a focus on less breadth and more depth. Mineral miners, with more price flexibility, can capture pockets of demand and a higher willingness to pay. This leads them to a market-to-mine or demand-driven orientation. Mineral miners will commonly identify demand and search for supply to fill it. This, in turn, 
leads to a focus on diversification. More breadth, less depth.